Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. This is I Allegedly. And I have a good one for you today. I am in Laguna Beach. I'm in a place called Aliso Beach, which is south, right above Dana Point. Got a lot of the seagulls out this morning. This is absolutely a beautiful place. Overcast, cool. Just a nice place to hang out. There's a lot to talk about the economy, and uh, <laughs> there's so much to go over with you guys today. Uh, please, uh, before I get into it, please do not forget to hit the like button. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, share this with all your friends and colleagues. And a uh, couple things. This place, uh, tide comes in, tide comes out, but the beach gets really, you know, swallowed up at night. And, uh, but some of the waves are bigger and you get places that get taken out like this. And, uh, but just absolutely beautiful. And you see all these beach houses here and just absolutely stunning stuff. So uh, let's get into it. First things first, uh, Jerome Powell, we're going to retire the word transitory. Again, who in your life talks this way? What wordsmith uh, that you can't stand talks this way? No one talks this way. We're going to retire this word. Well, okay, why are we retiring the word transitory inflation? Because inflation's going to be with us all through 2022, guys. There is nothing that the Fed is doing, which is this is their job, is to maintain the economy. The central banks around the country, their job is to, you know, keep employment good, uh, keep the economy good, uh, interest rates down, and, uh, uh, you know, take care of stuff like this. It's absolutely ridiculous that inflation is sky high right now. And uh, we're not supposed to talk about this anymore. Let's retire the word. So there's that. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. And the next thing is we have a, a private company, ADP. They are a payroll company. Great company. They put together payroll services. If you have, I think it's two employees on up, you can have ADP handle your payroll. You know, they print the checks, they do the federal deposits, the tax deposits, all that stuff for you. Well, every month ADP does a report on how many jobs are added. We're supposed to celebrate this right now. Now it's anticipated that we added 534,000 jobs to our economy in the month of November. Wow, that's great, okay. Uh, they were anticipating 506,000 and again we're supposed to celebrate this and it's ridiculous because every week you have first-time unemployment claims that get added to this let's just say it's 199,000 200,000 a week well that's 800,000 plus a month guys okay it's 4.3 weeks in a month on average so just say four that's 800,000. We are losing net jobs every month right now, according to this. And we're supposed to celebrate this on how great this is. And guys, it's not. It's not great at all. It's an absolute, utter joke. And again, more and more people are starting their own jobs right now, their own companies right now, and leaving their jobs. Um, good for them, okay? But these numbers from ADP and the, and the unemployment numbers and the job numbers get revised up revised down you know last month in October they thought it was 590 it got right revised down to 570 this happens week after week after week month after month the unemployment claims get usually revised up to where they're worse and the uh, jobs that we added are down plus they're all basically hospitality and leisure jobs you're not seeing big jobs in construction and manufacturing you're seeing nothing like that that's going to help our economy grow right now all these birds out here it's almost like it's gonna rain out here but it's just not so uh, really nice nice day all these rocks out here I'll walk towards that for you guys just absolutely beautiful
for those of you that are new here, this channel was built on getting funding through the SBA, through grants, through different lenders and things like that. That's how it was originally started. And uh, one thing that's absolutely fascinating is there is an inspector general who just did a report about the Small Business Administration and how they gave out billions of dollars in loans and grants to businesses that were never eligible. This guy's got the greatest name in the world. The inspector general, his name is Hannibal Ware. That's his real name, Hannibal. Hannibal Ware, okay? I mean, he sounds like a villain, but he's, he's the, one of the good guys. Anyways, Hannibal did this report where they determined that there was $210 billion of these loans and grants given out to people, okay? $3.7 billion worth of this money was never supposed to be disseminated to people, never. Now, the government has a do not lend, do not fund list of ineligible businesses. And it is absolutely amazing. 117,135 people got grants they were never supposed to get. Now, people like me, we got cheated out of our grants. I can give you a list of probably 40 people that I know that didn't get their grants that they were supposed to get. They run legitimate businesses and didn't get the grant, okay? That being said, there's over 117,000 people that fleeced the system and didn't get it. Now, there's another 77,000 people that got loans uh, that were never supposed to get it. Now, here's the thing. These are 30-year loans for stimulus money. Now, the loans are great, okay? Low interest rate, you can use the money to fund your business. Definitely a great program, but you're tied to the federal government for 30 years, 30 years. And that being said, what do you do with all these businesses that are ineligible, okay? Now, the current administration is blaming the Trump administration and that it's his fault that this happened, which is preposterous. And now, this wouldn't happen now, okay, okay. <laughs> so, anyways, there are still almost $100 billion in federal money that's eligible for these loans and for these grants. The problem with the grants is that they're so convoluted now that you have to live in a low-income area, okay? This neighborhood, for example, wouldn't qualify for an economic injury grant loan. Even if the guy lost his business, it collapsed to the ground, you wouldn't get it. Now, the problem with this is if you had a hurricane, you had an earthquake, you had something like that, it didn't matter, it doesn't matter where you live, you could get federal funding to rebuild your business. So they made it so it was only gonna to go to the low income areas and it, it's just an absolute mess. But people fleeced the system, people lied. Early on when people stopped getting funding, people like me that said, hey, I have no employees, it's just me. Uh, people lied and said they had 12 employees so they'd get the $10,000 grant. Now, they're not going after these people right now. That's ridiculous. They need to go and, and uh, to, you know, do a, a, a Lee Price the third, that guy that fleeced the PPP money that we talked about in the last video. They need to do things like that with these people, but who knows if they will or not. So, you know, share your thoughts on this stuff. I know a lot of people that got it. The lady that cleans my house, okay? She got an EIDL loan when I couldn't get one, okay? Which is funny, okay? She has a business, she's entitled to do whatever she wants to do, but, it's kind of ridiculous, and I have no idea. I didn't help her fill out the application. Don't know anything about it, but take a look at this, guys. All these rocks built here. Absolutely beautiful, you know? You got the moss growing and everything. But do you know people that got these loans or these grants that were not eligible, you know, in your community? My favorite in uh, my city was the coffee house that said they had 61 employees for PPP money, okay? Yeah. I've never seen more than three or four people in the place at a time. Isn't this beautiful? So, share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys.
couple of my favorite people I like to uh, point things out about. Uh, first one, Jim Cramer. Uh, Costco just had their announcement of their earnings and their sales. And again, guys, they missed the mark. How is that possible? Okay, how is it possible that Costco is down? It makes zero sense right now, guys. It absolutely makes no sense in this economy when everybody should be shopping, everybody should be buying stuff, that Costco is up in any way. If you believe that this economy is good, you are kidding yourself right now uh, with what's happening. It's, it's absolute lunacy to think that Costco is great. Now, Kramer, I'll include the article because he sent it out in his email for his investment club on why you shouldn't be concerned about their sales being off. No, everybody, we should be concerned that every business's sales are off right now. So there's that. The next thing is my main man, Elon Musk. I love this guy. Yesterday, this guy talks about SpaceX going bankrupt. And today, uh, he's mocking Apple. Apple has a polishing cloth. Apple kind of, you know, they have their yearly report on what we're going to do. They came up with a $20 polishing cloth for your iPhone, which, uh, again, you have to be a glue sniffing fool to go get a $20 polishing cloth from Apple. Try not to get wet here, guys. Uh, so that being said, the best thing about this, I mean, seriously, you can go to a Dollar Tree and buy a dollar, uh, and buy a dollar uh, rag that would clean your iPhone just fine. It's 20 bucks for this thing, and they have no idea when they're going to uh, deliver it. It's on back order right now, which is funny. So what does our main man do, Elon Musk? He comes out with a new cyber whistle. Not kidding, you guys. A new cyber whistle that you guys can get. And, uh, you know, uh, he says it'll be delivered before the, uh, the Apple rag will be delivered. So think about this guy. I mean, he came up with tequila. He came up with the flamethrower. Uh, I mean, I'm telling you, the tuna, this, uh, the fatty tuna for his sushi, That'll be Elon's tuna will be next, but you guys get to blow his whistle. So all you fanboys out there that all insult me, they're just jealous of him. <laughs> okay, I love that. I think it's hilarious that you guys have a car that is so expensive and uh, you think I'm jealous of this guy, okay? Enjoy your car payment. That's all I have to say. And, and don't forget to get your whistle, okay? Hang that whistle on the uh, rear view mirror, okay? Do that. Now, here's the next thing. Talking about cars, right now the average new car, guys, is going for over $600 above the recommended uh, uh, manufactured price. What planet is that? The average new car is over $46,000. $46,000. All-time high for new cars, all-time high for used cars. And again, okay, who is buying these cars? I, I mean, Guys, go buy a used car. Go buy something that, you know, talk to your friends, talk to people at your church, talk to people you work with. People have extra cars. You don't need to have a $50,000 car and a $50,000 car payment, okay? I mean, some of the stuff that people write me, okay, is insane, is insane. Uh, car payments, truck payments, for their truck that they drive around to look cool in. They don't, they're not in the construction business. They're driving a cool truck, okay? And they have $1,800 a month car payments. Okay, it's insane, guys. What do you think I should do, refinance it? No, sell it. That's what I think you should do. It's what I tell 99% of them. Anyways, guys, it's absolutely crazy. Elon's got the whistle. Let me know if you're gonna buy uh, Elon's whistle. <laughs> if you're gonna. <laughs> Buy Elon's whistle and blow Elon's whistle anytime soon. Let me know that if you're going to do that. And uh, again, I admire this guy for one reason, and that is he is out using government subsidies on your dime. He is selling billions of dollars worth of his stock right now and acting like it's no big deal. And then the day after Thanksgiving tells his employees they could go bankrupt if they don't have two rockets go up a week. Think about that, guys. 26 rockets next year. Okay? Or we're going to go bankrupt, okay? I don't think they're going to sell 26 rockets. Think of all the space junk and everything else that would be up there. But anyways, share your thoughts and all that stuff. I want to know what you guys think.
this is really a beautiful spot though all these houses are just insane look at that house with the stilts i always get a kick out of that one the rumor is there was a tv show called heart to heart and uh, there was a guy that played the uh, chauffeur max max the chauffeur anyways the rumor is that was his house so i don't know if that's true or not somebody will write me and tell me it is i forgot the guy's name but share your thoughts How crazy is this? This just passed here in the United States. Debt collectors can go after people via social media now. They can slide into your direct messages, they can hit you up on Facebook, hit you up on Twitter, and they can send you messages now to collect on a debt. That is absolutely insane right now. Uh, the protection has been lifted. now. These have to be private messages, okay? Read the story in the video description below. They have to be private messages, but your <laughs> debt collectors will not do that. They will be posting on your Twitter, on your Instagram, hey, deadbeat, pay your phone bill, okay? Uh, you will see this like you've never seen it before. So again, who, who allows stuff like this? This is insanity that things like this happen and you find out after the fact. So there's a lot of people out there that are gonna be chased uh, via your Facebook, via your Instagram, and whatever else, your Twitter, okay? And let you know that uh, uh, they're coming for you, okay? So this will get abused like it always does. And there's all these new rules with debt collection that take, that take effect as of December. And again, you don't see those being talked about. You see that, uh, hey, great news, we can come after you guys via social media. So share your thoughts on this, guys, because this is going to be a, an absolute mess. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in, uh, in the coming months. To bring up one more story in regards to the Fed Chairman, uh, Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen, uh, this is gonna be filed under the, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, they came out in front of the uh, Senate committee and said, hey, listen, we underestimated inflation. I'm telling you guys, these guys are in charge. These are people that are running the show now, guys. And I, I'm my prediction is Jerome Powell is left in there so that when all hell breaks loose and everything collapses, it's gonna be this guy's fault. And this doesn't help his case because we underestimated inflation. We underestimated the supply chain problems. You understand there are family businesses, there are big companies, small companies, Costco, that have been suffered, that have been affected by this and are suffering right now. And we underestimated it, so there's that. You know, I had a family member call me today in regards to something with business and he was furious about something that happened. And uh, I calmed him down, but here's the thing. You don't wanna do this in your own personal life, you don't wanna do it with relationships, you don't wanna do it with your business, but you guys need to, to have tough conversations at time with people, okay? You know, stay in a loveless marriage, stay in a loveless uh, partnership with your business partner. You're, you're an idiot for doing that. Life is too short. There's so much more out there. But again, I don't wanna have that conversation. Have it, do it, do it. I know who my friends are, I know who they're not. I cut those people off gleefully, okay? And they don't get access to me. There's a lot of benefits to Dan, a ton, okay? And uh, they don't get that. But again, have tough conversations about money. Finances are difficult right now. Your retirement, is sketchy right now. If you do not see the ups and downs of this world right now and the warning signs after warning signs after warning signs, you are foolish, okay? Just drink away, okay, guys, because it's bad, okay? So, you know, the next thing is this story kind of went under the radar 
but it's kind of a big deal. It's a super big deal. Facebook is going to allow cryptocurrency to be advertised again. And once again, guys, cryptocurrency is here to stay. I do not pretend to understand it. I think a lot of it's ridiculous. I think that the morons with their backwards baseball caps telling me that they've got $18 million in the bank are complete delusional freaks. And I wouldn't trust them with lunch money, let alone cryptocurrency money. So that being said, Facebook is going to allow cryptocurrency advertising because it's here to stay. So share your thoughts on that, guys. Just an overcast day, beautiful though out here. Uh, I'm gonna end this video with these last two stories. Uh, there is an asteroid that is headed towards Earth. I love stories like this where the asteroid is as tall as the Eiffel Tower. I just love the hyperbole. It's as tall as the Eiffel Tower. It's 1,082 feet, and it's going to come super close to Earth on December 11th. Beware. It's going to come 4.6 million miles from Earth, and we should be totally concerned about that. Okay, well, I'm going to sleep through that one, okay? But I love how they just make a big deal out of stuff like this. And the very last thing is AMC movie theaters, they have a thing now where you can go rent the entire movie theater out, which I think is super cool. Imagine having an I allegedly movie night, okay? Some people out there are like, I hate the movies, Dan, and I will never participate with you. Okay, but you can actually rent the whole movie theater and you get like 30, 40 tickets and it's like 400 bucks. So very cool. Uh, I'm going to look into that, to say the least. Birdies are coming. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Do not forget to hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Uh, share this with all your friends and colleagues. Uh, don't forget, we have an email list that you can join. It's in the video description below. Also, we have a Patreon channel where you get more access to me if you want me to consult for your business. Uh, sign up for that, guys. The link is below. Uh, Onward and upward, guys. I will see you very soon.